Today we're going to start a new series. And how many's ever had to take a, a medicine or vitamin and the pill was like really big? <laughs> and it was a hard pill to swallow. And you didn't want to do it, but you had to do it um, to get better. Um, over the next few weeks, this might be a tough pill to swallow. And, um, and, I, and it's going to stretch us. It's going to, it's going to grow us. Um, if we'll allow the Lord. How many know that none of us have made it yet? Yeah, right. That we're all on that journey. And um, if you've made it, um, you're deceived. <laughs> um, um, or you're Jesus. Um, but um, none of us have made it. And we're all on this journey together. And we're, and we're walking um, we're walking through this journey, and, um, and, and loving one another is a major part of that. And, and so we're going to talk over the next few weeks, the name of the, uh, the series, and I got a, a graphic for you, um, uh, Love Your Neighbor, yep, even that one. Uh, we, I, I see as you're getting it, you're... you're uh, um, there are people that are difficult to love, right? Now, you may be one of them. <laughs> you may be difficult for somebody to love, but uh, you're, you're still loved. Uh, and, and there's all of us, I think, have people or, pe- or people groups that we struggle to truly, truly love them. Um, and so we're going to talk about the next few weeks how to love those that we struggle to love. How many are ready f- to swallow that pill? Um, let's face it. There are people that love us and it's easy for us to love them back. That, that, in fact, Jesus said, um, you know, you love those that, you know, that love you and do good for you. But I mean, the world does that. And, um, and he challenges us to love our enemies and, and we're going to talk about that a little bit today. Um, it's difficult to love those who don't love us back. But over the next few weeks, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna allow the Lord to grow us up a little bit in that area. So how many are ready? Yeah. Okay, a couple of you, a few of you. How many are ready? Okay. Um, so turn to Luke chapter 22. Just mark that place. We'll go to several verses today. But Luke chapter 22, Genesis 50. So if you'll mark those two places and we'll begin in Matthew chapter five. Luke 22, Genesis 50, and we'll begin in Matthew chapter five. And this is part of Jesus's sermon on the Mount. And, um, and Jesus, of course, lays out a bunch of stuff that seems so impossible for us to pull off in the sermon on the Mount. Um, and this is, this is definitely one of them. Verse 43. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. How many know that's pretty much the way the world works? That's the world's philosophy. How many know that God's kingdom doesn't work the way this world does? It does not have the same philosophy. So if you're a member of the kingdom of God, we operate by a different philosophy than that right there. Get down that pill. Go ahead, swallow. Mm. Um, you have heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Now, when Jesus is speaking this, they're under the rule of the Romans. And I imagine that as he begins to speak this, there are some of them saying, yeah, no, I, I don't think I'm going there. Um, Jesus says, I can, I, I'll, I'll love, I'll love, you know, um, um, I love those that are easy to love, but if you're asking me to love the, um, the, the Roman soldiers and the Roman government that has come in and, and uh, rule us with, uh, in the way that they do, they occupy, right? They occupied their territory. And, um, and Jesus was saying to love them. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your father in heaven. Isn't that interesting? Uh, let me say this, that when we love our enemies, we resemble him. When we, when we hate our enemies, we resemble the world. But when we love them, when we choose to love them, we, we look like our heavenly father. 
where his, that's what his sons and his daughters are supposed to look like. For he makes his son, he makes his son rise on the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. <gasps> the IRS agents even do that. Do you understand? He was using a term in, in their culture. He picked out somebody that they couldn't stand, somebody that they hated. They, the, the ones that collected the money for the Roman government. They couldn't stand those thieves. And Jesus was like, you're no different than them if you love just those who love you. So put whatever you want to put there. What, what, who's, it, who's difficult for you to love? Put that in, in that. Um, and, um, and you'll see that you're no different than them if you can't love those that are difficult to love. And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect. Isn't that interesting that Jesus links perfection to loving our enemies? Do you see that? Um, I don't think Jesus would ask us to do something that we could not do. I don't think he would command us to do something that we were incapable of doing. That would be like, um, that would be like a parent um, commanding a child to do something that they're incapable of doing. How many know that would just be a life of total frustration? So uh, we can do this. Um, do you believe you can do this? Yes. Do you really believe you can do this? Yes. Say, I believe I can do this. I believe I can do this. <laughs> okay. I, I, I just wrote down a list of, of people, not that I struggle to love, but maybe you struggle to love. And, um, and so I, I, um, I just wrote down just a list and just, you know, if this, if this, um, you know, shoe fits, wear it. Um, I think it's difficult. I think that Christians struggle to love Muslims. Not just terrorists, but all of them. I think we struggle with that. I think Christians struggle to love homosexuals. I think we don't know how. I, I think we, we, we struggle with tolerance versus what real love is. And, and we, struggle, we struggle with that. We, we struggle with judgment. And is it okay to call down fire from heaven? Right? I think we struggle with that. I think Christians struggle to, to love those who vote different than them. I mean, you ever, you ever be around, have you ever been around someone and they, and you can't believe they voted for that person. And like, you get all like your heart starts beating like real fast and you don't even want to talk to them. You're like, you want to just say, are you an idiot? Anybody ever been there? I think we struggle with that. I mean, God, God forbid we actually have a civil conversation with somebody who might have a different political view than us because we know that Jesus, we know he was a Republican. <laughs> we know that it's in scripture. <laughs> I think some of us might struggle to love illegal aliens. Okay. That got really quiet there. I, I do. I think we struggle with that. I, I think some of us struggle with environmentalists. People that, you know, put a major priority on saving the planet and hugging trees. I think we definitely in Texas struggle with gun control advocates. <laughs> Oh, a few of you laughed, and some of you are like, "Yeah, I don't love them," and I'm not getting you. I'm not swallowing that pill. <laughs> I think we struggle to love the IRS agents, right? I think we struggle just to love anyone who disagrees with us, even theologically. Like it, it could be another Christian that just like like you believe in the rapture, but they don't. We struggle. We struggle with that. We struggle to love the church down the street that doesn't believe in speaking in tongues. Am I, am I just, is anybody relating to this? 
We struggle with that. And, and those aren't even, some of those might be our enemies, but some of those aren't even enemies. And Jesus is telling us to love our enemies. Yeah. Not just the people that make us, that rub us the wrong way, but people that are dead set against us, that are fighting against us. So that's what we're going to talk about today is, is how, do we, how do we learn how to love? What does it look like to love those that hate us, that those that are against us? Let's look at the first part. Bless those who curse you. Bless those who curse you. The word bless comes from the word where we get the, the word eulogy. Anybody ever go to a funeral and somebody get up and say something bad about the person? Even if they were a horrible person, a eulogy is generally good stuff. I mean, I've been to some funerals before where I sat there and thought, that's not the guy I knew. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody ever been there? You're like, maybe they knew him a little different than I did. But, uh, uh, and, and they're all talking about how they went to heaven, and you're pretty sure they didn't. You know, but eulogies are they're, 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 they talk good of people. So, so it's the it's the term the, the word that we get this this word bless is um, is that that term, um, and it means to speak well of. It means to pronounce a blessing on. It means to extend favor to someone, to invoke a blessing, to bestow blessings upon. And so those that curse you, and that word curse means to speak evil of you, to pray against you, to wish evil upon you. So, so the opposite of that is blessing them. And so Jesus tells us that we're to, we're to bless those, we're to think good things about those that think bad things about us. We're to want good things for those that want bad and evil things to happen to us. Uh, remember when James and John wanted to call fire down from heaven uh, on the Samaritans. See, the Samaritans had made them mad. And so they wanted to respond in the same manner. And so they wanted evil to happen to them. They wanted permission to annihilate them. How many has ever been there? You might not have prayed the prayer, but you sure thought it. I wonder if it's okay if I pray this prayer. But Jesus tells us to bless those that curse us, to bless them. I, I, I was thinking of some examples. And how, how many has ever heard of David Wilkerson? David Wilkerson, years ago, and if you haven't, if you haven't heard of him, um, there was a, 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 like a movie back in the 70s, and it was definitely looks like it was made in the 70s, um, called The Cross and the Switchblade. But there's a book, there's an there's a actual biography about um, that, that event, and, and um, as David Wilkerson was a missionary to New York City. I mean, know that America needs missionaries. <laughs> and so he goes there and he meets this guy whose name is Nicky Cruz. And Nicky Cruz is a gang member and he's hard. I mean, this guy is like the worst of the worst of the worst of the worst. And David Wilkerson is, um, um, is trying to win this. And, and he's like dead set. He's going to win Nicky Cruz to the Lord. And he is like, um, he's like pursuing him. And, um, and Nicky Cruz one day gets in his face. And this is what he says to David Wilkerson. He says, you come near me and I'll kill you. And David Wilkerson responded, yeah, you could do that. You could cut me up into a thousand pieces and lay them in the street and every piece will still love you. It's a blessing for cursing. Do you see that? Now, um, I've seen David Wilkerson and um, Rick actually traveled with David Wilkerson for, for a season he ain't this big old tough dude. And, um, and let me just say this. In order to love someone like that, God's got to empower you to, to pull that off. Amen. To look at somebody who is going to take you out. And, and, and the only thing that comes out of your mouth is love. That's supernatural stuff. Another example in, uh, that we find in the Bible, you can turn to Genesis chapter 50, and there's a man in the Bible that, that uh, his name is Joseph, and his, his brothers hated him, the Bible said. They did not like him. They, uh, David, or, or Joseph was his, his father's favorite, and Joseph um, um, 
had a dream, and, and in his dream, his, uh, his brothers uh, were going to worship him, and they were going to be submitted to him, and they didn't like that. They, they, that made him even that more mad, and then he had another dream, and it was the same thing, and so his brothers wanted to kill him. They hated him so much that they wanted to kill him. Had it not been for one brother that was sane, they would have killed him, and, and he convinced them to sell him into slavery. And so that's exactly what happens to Joseph. So he's sold into slavery. He ends up in prison. And, and, and if, you know, hopefully you know the story. If you don't know the story, God, God gets him to a place where he is now second in command of all Egypt, the most powerful empire of the day. And, um, and he's confronted with his, his brothers. His brothers find him. And there's a, there's a time when, um, when his dad dies and his brothers are scared to death of what's going to happen. And this is how Joseph responds. His brothers are like, they don't, they won't, don't want to go near him because they're like, oh, now that dad's dead, he's going to get us. He's going to get us back. He's going to, he's going to take revenge on us. And listen to what it says. Joseph said to them, verse 19, do not be afraid for I am in the place of God. In other words, I'm, in, I'm where God put me. But as for you, you meant evil against me. Can you imagine them saying, uh, uh, uh oh. But God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. Listen to what he does for those who those who wanted him dead, those who thought evil of him, those who cursed him. Listen to what he says. I will provide for you and your little ones, your families, you and your families are going to be taken care of. I'll see to it that you're taken care of. And he comforted them and he spoke kindly to them. Blessing for cursing. I read the story of Joseph and, and, I, and, and I think that the way the world, the way the world thinks, I, I, think, I think like that most of the time. I think if I was reunited with them, I don't think I would take care of them. I would say, ha ha ha, ha. Or at least I'd let them sweat a little bit. Right? I'd let them go hungry for a little while. I, 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 th how many know that's the way the world thinks? It's revenge. It's, it's, to, it's, to, it's to get vengeance. Joseph doesn't do that. He blesses those who cursed him. Now let's look at the next thing. Uh, to do good to those who hate you. Good means rightly. To act rightly. To act honorably. To do what is right. In such a way that there's no room for any type of blame. It's not a manipulative thing. It's not like you're trying. Um, I, I think sometimes we, we've got to check our heart because sometimes we can. Let, let me give you an example. I um, had uh, was counseling someone one time and they had an offense with someone. And, um, and I was like, well, you need to deal with that offense. And you need to forgive them and you need to deal with the offense. And so they walked up to the person and this is what they said to him. I just want to let you know I forgive you. And so that person came to me and said, hey, so-and-so came up to me and just said that they forgive me. What's that all about? Like, oh, that's all they said? And I said, um, okay. Do you see how that's kind of, that's like a prideful position? How many know you didn't deal with it? Yeah. What you did was I'm better than you. You're still messed up. You, you hurt me. And I just want to let you know I, I'm, I'm good uh, and I'm above you and you're still messed up. You, you understand? And so a lot of times our heart, we do things out of, uh, uh, despite the other person. That's still, that's still getting vengeance. Do you understand that? That, that, that doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Doing good where there's no air. In other words, your heart is clean. That you know that you know that you know that your heart is clean. And right before the Lord. When Jesus, um, so those that hate you, uh, we're to do good for them. Those that dislike you. Those that, um, that have malicious, that's what hate means, have malicious feelings towards you. If God killed you, that'd be okay. And if God would let them, they'd kill you. That's, that's, that's hate. This is strong, strong dislike. Jesus, um, uh, look in Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, and this is what it says. Um, they, they come to arrest Jesus. And when those around him saw what was going to happen, this is his disciples. They said to him, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? So they come to arrest them. And I can see the disciples going, can we pull out our swords? 
because they wanted a sword fight. They wanted to go to battle, right? And um, so these fishermen and tax collector and, and, and these guys, they're going to pull out swords and fight off soldiers. Um, and, uh, and one of them, and we know this from another gospel, was Peter. And one of them struck the servant of the, mo- of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And I always say this because he missed his head because he, he, he was a fisherman wielding a sword. Um, and Jesus answered and said, permit even this. And he touched his ear and he healed him. Jesus didn't have to do anything for that guy. That guy came to arrest him. And what does Jesus do? Oh, as they're arresting him, oh, let me heal that for you. What, what, he's doing good. He's doing good for those who don't like him. How many know that there is nothing, there is um uh, there is no way you can fight against that. What are you going to say? I can imagine the guy going, uh, thanks, I appreciate that. Uh, now, you know, put on these chains. Uh, what, 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 is, what does he do? What does someone do when you, re- there, is, there is no defense mechanism for that. There is no, um, uh, there, there is no way to combat against that when you love people that don't love you. Steve Saint, this is one of the most incredible stories I've ever heard um, of forgiveness and loving um, someone who doesn't like you. Steve Saint is uh, the son of a missionary named Nate Saint. There's, a, there's actually a movie about this called The End of the Spear, um, and it's a great movie. It'd be a great movie for you to watch with, uh, with, with your kids. Um, it's about this missionary named Nate Saint, who is a missionary to Ecuador, and Uh, there's a line in the movie, I don't know if this actually happened, but um, he's going to go reach an unreached people group, a a tribe, a very violent tribe. In fact, this tribe like um, has all the other tribes in Ecuador scared of them. They kill everybody. And Nate Saint, before he takes off that day, his son says, dad, do you have your gun? And he goes, yeah. And he goes, dad, will you promise me that you'll fight them off if they attack? And he says to his son, he says to his son, I'm ready to meet Jesus. They're not. His dad doesn't come back. His dad is, is, is killed. He's speared to death. And, and as he's trying to reach these people with the gospel, that happened in 1956. A few years later, Steve goes back to Ecuador, the boy, the son, and he would meet the man that killed his father. But instead of returning evil for evil, he forgave him. The man that murdered his dad, he forgave him. And that man later would become a believer. When Steve was a little older, he wanted to be baptized. And he would ask the man who killed his dad. He would give that man the honor of baptizing him. (laughs) Today, Um, He honors that man by calling him granddad. He calls him his grandfather. And he brings him into his house and he allows him to to love on his kids. Is that amazing? He calls him grandfather. I don't know about you, but I think if I'm returning to Ecuador, I'm going with some, I'm going with some guns. Uh, Come on, let's, let's be real. I mean, this was, this is supernatural. You can't do this. And let me just say this, that they toured, they went all throughout the world. Those two men together, preaching the gospel together as a team. I saw them. I saw them at an event one time and I was set. I was just dumbfounded. I was like, I can't believe that they're friends, that they're buddies. (laughs) Only God can empower you to do that. Pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. To pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Those who insult you, treat you abusively. Those who threaten you, those who falsely accuse you. How many want to defend themselves? But God said, I want to be your defender. Those who persecute you, those who drive you away, repel you, reject you, 
those that harass you, those who mistreat you to pray for them. And this is what we want to do is we want to pray, God, kill them. God, I just pray right now that it, I would be, I just want to let you know I'm okay and I will not lose sleep if I wake up and, you know, wake up and I find out that they are no longer with us. God, I just pray, I just pray that you would judge them with the harshest judgment. God, I know that you're a God of mercy and grace, but I know you're also the judge that sits on the throne. Please pour out your judgment upon them all. Amen. <laughs> that's not the kind of prayer Jesus is talking about here. He's not telling us to pray against them. He's he, he, it says to pray for them. It's for, for us to get on our knees and to begin to pray for that person. You know, one of the most famous examples of that is when Jesus was, was crucified on the cross in Luke chapter 23, as he's hanging there, he's on the cross hanging there. He's been beaten. He's, he's at the point where um, he's not going to be alive much longer. He's gone through this long, this long ordeal. And this is what Jesus says. Verse 34, then Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Man. I, I can't, I just, I can't imagine being in that position. You know, I know that Jesus says that um, he could call angels down to, um, um, to take care of him. And I think most of us would want to do that. We, we don't want to pray that God forgive them. We want to pray, God, it, right now, right now, deliver me and kill them all. Is it just me that thinks like that? Maybe I just need to get my heart clear. Uh, we, we think like that. And yet Jesus is challenging us not to think like that. Don't act like that. Don't live like that. That's, that's not how we're to live in the kingdom. That's not how his kingdom operates. His kingdom loves its enemies. William Tyndale is uh, the one largely responsible for us having the Bible in our language. 85, I think like 85% of the King James Version is um, as a result of his translation. And uh, he wanted to get the Bible in a, in, a, in a language that the people could read and understand. And so he got arrested because it was against the law. <laughs> it was against the law. So he got arrested for heresy. And he was put in jail and he served a long time in jail. And then he was eventually uh, strangled to death. And then they burned his corpse. So they killed him twice. They, they got so mad at him. We're not only going to strangle you, we're going to burn you after we strangle you. Um. But just before he died, this is what he prayed. Lord, open the king of England's eyes. He didn't say, God, kill them all. God, get, get vengeance. God, get, get vengeance for me, please. God, get them all back. No, what he said was, God, bring revelation. Give the king eyes to see. Uh, and two, within two years, actually, the king had a change of heart. So... Sounds like his prayer got answered. How oftentimes we want to bring condemnation and um, we want to bring the judgment and wrath of God down on others. And God wants us to stand in the gap because God longs to see them in his kingdom. God longs to see them in his family. Now, listen, there are always going to be those that reject the gospel. Always. Jesus even told us, you know, when they reject you, just move on. When they persecute you, pray for them, love them. <laughs> you may say, be saying to yourself, um, I hear what you're saying, but I, I, um, I just I can't do that. Some of those groups you mentioned earlier, I, just, I, can't, I can't love them. Maybe you're, maybe you're thinking uh, that uh, maybe you've been hurt and you've been wounded by a specific person. Maybe there's somebody that's really hurt you very, very bad. And you just cannot forgive them. You can't get past. Could, this could have been something that happened when you were a kid. Something that, that happened years and years and years and years and years ago. And you cannot love them. And you would say to me, if I was counseling you, you would say to me, you don't understand what they did to me. And, and, Listen, I can't walk in your shoes, but Jesus did. Jesus did. 
We sing that song today, freedom reigns in this place. God offers us the opportunity to get set free. But freedom comes when we submit to his authority and he cleans up the stuff that keeps us bound. Jesus wants us to love those that are difficult to love. And I can assure you that if he's commanded you to do it, you can do it. You can love your enemies. I want to encourage you. You can love your enemies. You can love those who've hurt and wounded you. Even the, even the worst wounds, you can love them. What we want is we want God to change them so that then we can love them. God didn't love you like that. When you were yet sinners, Christ came and he died for you, the Bible says. He didn't wait for you to get cleaned up to, to then decide to love you. The idea of forgiveness is, you know, when, when, whenever, um, uh, you know, in the Lord's Prayer, uh, some translations use the word trespasses, those that have, tra let us forgive those who have trespassed against us. And, and um, other translations use the word debt, debtors. Right? Forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. Those that, those that have offended us. The idea is that those that have offended us, they are indebted to us because there's a charge against them. Do you see that? Forgiveness is a gift. They don't deserve it. Forgiveness is a gift that we choose to give. We choose to cancel that debt against us. Do, do you see that? You have the power to do that. And to release them. Forgiveness is releasing them. God wants us to learn how to love those that persecute us. He wants us to love our enemies. He wants us to love those who hate us and love those who want nothing more than to see evil come about in our life. That kind of love, though, it's not of this world. It's a supernatural love that's from a different kingdom. And the only way you can tap into that is by tapping into the God who is love. We cannot love our enemies on our own. You can't do it. Listen, there's always going to be something hidden down deep inside. Listen, there, you know as well as I do that there are things that sometimes come up and we're like, I didn't even know that was in my heart. You see something on the news and, you're, and, and you're, you start getting angry at that group of people or that person. And, and, and. Um, we, we have to step back and sometimes we just got to say, God, heal this, this mess in my heart and help me. Help me be who you've called me to be. I can't do it on my own because everything, every time I turn on the television, I am enraged at what I see. That person that hurt me years ago, God, they've never asked for forgiveness and they'll never change. I refuse. I cannot love them. Matthew 19, 26, and I know this is speaking of something different, but the principle applies. It really applies to everything concerning God. But Jesus looked at them and he said to them, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. With God, it's possible to love your enemies. It's possible to forgive those who don't deserve to be forgiven. God loved you and he forgave you and you didn't deserve it. God's asking you, will you give mercy and grace where it's not deserved? Because that's what mercy and grace is. Will you let it go? Will you move on? Will you allow God to heal you? Do you understand that forgiveness, this is, this is the idea of forgiveness. It is God, I step out of your seat and I give you permission. I give you, I, I, I submit to your authority to carry out judgment, punishment, grace and mercy, however you want to. I am no longer I am no longer in charge of that offense. That's what forgiveness is. That's where you trust God to be just. And see, when you pray for them is when you pray and say, God, I know you're a just God, but they need mercy and grace. You see how that all works? And then God begins to change your heart because you've been willing to submit yourself to his authority and say, God, I can't do this on my own, but through you, I can do this. 
1 Thessalonians chapter 3. I'm going to wrap up with this. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 12. You swallowing the pill this morning? Yeah. Yep. All right. There's more the next few weeks. <laughs> First Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 12. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all, just as we do to you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. I want you to catch this. May the Lord make you increase and abound in love. May the Lord make you increase and abound in love. You can't do it on your own. The Lord wants to help you increase and abound in love. You need him. You need his spirit working on the inside of you. You need him to empower you to do this. And it's where we, as, as men and women, where we stand before the Lord and we say, God, I'm surrendered. And I can't do this by myself. God, I fail. I try and I fail. And I try and I fail. And I try and I fail. But God, I submit to you right now. And I ask you to empower me, to work in me, to love with your love. God, help me to love that person, that, per that people group. Help me to love them in a way I've never been able to before. And when we do that, then we invite God into the equation and all things are possible. How many believe that? Amen. Let's, um, let's just bow your heads right where you're at. God can empower you, but you have to be humble. The Bible says that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. If you're going to try to do it all on your own, go for it. You're going to fail. Because they're going to do something that ticks you off. And you're going to be right back where you were. But God is love. And his spirit lives on the inside of you. And it's learning how to allow him and it's yielding to him. And allowing him, allowing him to give you eyes to see. And a heart to love. So right where you're at this morning, I, I, um, I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you right now. I, I, I want you to ask him to speak to you in regards to this message this morning. I want you to ask him, God, is there someone that I'm struggling to love? Is there a people group I'm struggling to love? This morning, we're going to ask him to empower us to love the way he wants us to love. To love those he just placed on your heart. If you need to write it down so you don't forget their name, Write it down. We're going to pray for those. We're going to learn how to pray for those who persecute us and love those who hate us. I want to lead you in a prayer this morning. And if you want to, if you want to raise your hands, uh, it's, just a, it's just the international sign for surrender. As you pray this prayer. In other words, you're saying, God, I give up. I'm submitting to you. And I want you to just, just pray this prayer with me this morning. Father, you've instructed me to love my enemies. I can't do that on my own. I've tried and I've failed. Today, I invite you to help me. I humble myself before you and I ask for your help to love those I struggle to love. Cause me to increase and abound in your love for others. Help me when I'm cursed to respond by blessing. Help me when I'm hated to respond with goodness and with kindness. And help me to pray for those who persecute me. I lean on your ability, not mine. I am confident that with you, this is possible. In Jesus' name, amen. How many believe that?
I, um, I believe, I believe that as you do that and as you determine to allow him to love through you, that you're going to see a change in some, the, the way you react to people. And let me just challenge you with this. And we're going to talk about this over the next few weeks, but let me challenge you with this. When you feel yourself getting emotionally charged, whether you're in a conversation with somebody, listen, and, and listen, if someone's offended you and they're offensive in their behavior towards you, they will always push those buttons. They will always, the, I mean, and, and we don't pray God change them so I can love them. Our prayer is, our, our prayer is, now if we pray for them, we can, if God shows us specific things we can pray for, but our prayer is God help me to love them the way they are, right? That's our prayer for ourselves. And so let me, let me challenge you with this, that when you feel that happening, acknowledge the Holy Spirit at that moment. Learn how to acknowledge the Holy Spirit. God, I don't want to speak. I don't, I, I want to be slow to speak. God, I don't re- want to respond with an emotionally charged response. Help me to respond the way you want me to respond. And then yield to the Holy Spirit and allow him to work through you. It's possible. It's possible. I want to encourage you. It's possible. Jesus would not have asked us to do something we're incapable of doing without his power working in us. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Thank you for your instruction this morning. And now, Father, we just ask for the Holy Spirit to help us fulfill that. And we just give you praise for that. In Jesus' name, amen.